Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Haven't done a tutorial in a while, <clears throat> but we're back and we're going to be working with UDK instead of Unreal Engine for now because I've got a lot of people asking more for UDK again. Um, so obviously I want to do my best to cater to everybody. Um, so I'm going to show you to, uh, how to use a tool that I personally don't use too often, but I've had to relearn for purposes I, I can't go into detail for. But uh, the tool I'm going to go into is the foliage tool. It allows you to basically paint uh, instances of static meshes pretty quickly. Um, and typically it's used for foliage, plants, anything organic really, um, just because things that are organic are, are more random, uh, where you can, you know, they'll have random paths and things like that. Uh, whereas, you know, architectural pieces, you know, they're placed in certain ways for specific reasons, just for structural purposes, so they can't be as random. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Right now, uh, I created a scene that's pretty straightforward, um, has a dominant directional light. Uh, this is just going to be uh, a BSP block. It's 20, I think it's 49, 4096 by 4096 by 256. And then I got a little light mass and pores volume, and that's it. And I just grabbed a dirt texture, uh, or a dirt material, I should say, uh, from the content browser, just as a ground. So in order to get into the foliage mode, you have to click this button right here, the one that's a plant. It says foliage mode when you hover over it. And it's a pretty straightforward tool. It doesn't do too much for you in terms of complexity. Um, so in order to get a static mesh going, you got to go into the content browser and pick a static mesh. Uh, so let's pick some grass. And you just got to drag it into there. And right now we have it highlighted. So if you go ahead and hold down control and you left click drag when you're in paint mode, now I'll start painting some grass. It may freeze for the first second just because it's got to start painting a lot of things quickly. Uh, but once it unfreezes, you'll have a bunch of grass. So now, you know, when, if you do it again, it'll be a, it'll be more smooth. So right now, you're painting a lot of grass. Um, but you can also uh, basically erase it. Uh, typically, it's Control Shift Left Click Drag, but that doesn't work too well sometimes. Uh, so what you gotta do is make sure your erase density is fully up, uh, take down paint density all the way down, and then down here where it says density per, and that looks like some sort of unit, uh, if you make that zero and then control drag, or control shift drag, it'll erase for you. Um, but let's take erase density down, let's make paint density up a little bit, lower the radius a bit, and make density, let's make this like 50, and then if you just paint, you'll get patches of grass. And, you know, they're static right now just because there's not like a wind directional actor or anything like that. Uh, maybe I'll put one in in a bit just to show you how it's used. Uh, but that's basically the gist of it. And again, to erase, typically it's control shift, which it's working right now. Uh, but if you don't see that work, um, just make sure your erase density is high, your paint density is low, and the density here is zero. That'll typically work for you as well. Uh, so you can have more than one mesh being painted at the same time as well. So if we go back into our content browser, let's just pick a random uh, random mesh. Let's pick this guy. You gotta just drag him in. And when you drag him in, uh, there will be a slider. Right now they're both orange, meaning they're both going to be painted together. Uh, but if you only want one being painted, uh, you can left click to deselect it and then left click it again to select it. So if it's orange, it's going to get painted. And then you can also set a Z offset uh, just for this mesh. See how it's kind of sticking in the ground. Uh, if you do Z offset, let's do 256 and then max 512. They'll come up above the ground. And the same thing goes uh, for the grass. Uh, so right now, just because there's no uh, C offset, they're on the ground. Uh, but if we make this, I don't know, 16 to 32, they're going to hover a bit. See? And the same thing can go uh, for scaling. So let's just do the Z offset back to 0 to 0. Uh, scaling, you can have this grass be anywhere from as small as you want to as large as you want. So I'll do 0 0.5 to 100 and scale. And now, as you can see, 100 is pretty big. So you don't really want to do that, uh, but if you make it two, you know, you have a little bit of a variety here. Some are bigger, some are smaller, things like that. Kind of give variation. 
Um, and you can have even more detail just because uniform scale was selected. You couldn't get any instances there. Um, so like right now, uh, let's do, let's make them really tall pieces of grass. So uh, Z scale, let's make this 5 to 10. Maybe just drag it out. As you can see, now we have pretty pointy grass, which could work in certain sections of you know the world, whatever you want it to be. Um, but you can also do it in the other directions too. You get free range, but you can also lock them just so they don't change, things like that. Uh, so if you make it wide, you can see the grass is going to be pretty wide. So let's make that one by one. So you don't want to make it as drastic as I've been doing, just for example. Uh, but you can change a lot about the density and the radius and everything like that. So this is a good instance where I don't have to bring everything down to erase everything. Again, it's Control Shift. So let's go ahead. Uh, I'll show you how to do one other thing. So say you know you don't like them being this close to each other, be it any kind of mesh. If you go ahead and hit select mode, you can select each individual part and then drag them out from there. So you're not you don't have to basically stick with what's painted. You can then basically mix it up a bit uh, by individually dragging each piece. Go back to paint mode. Let's make a raise high, density low. Control shift should erase these, but it's not. If anything, you can always control. You control Z it. And then right here under filter, uh, this is where you can tell it where to draw. So say I uncheck VSP, it's not going to be able to draw on this. It would only be able to draw on landscapes, static meshes, and terrain. But if I check BSP again, you'll get this glowy circle. And then from there, it'll start painting again for you. Let's get that barrel out. Let's just draw some grass. Let's make that 100. And then let's see if the wind directional actor can actually get these leaves moving. So let's go into our content browser. Actor classes, let's type in wind. And we're going to do wind directional source. And as soon as we drop it in, we see that this grass is going crazy. Um, just because it's blowing in a certain direction. And as you spin it, it'll change direction. And then the main things you want to work with the wind directional source is the strength and the speed. So if you make strength really high, it's going to be as if the wind is just so powerful. So right now they're going crazy, and then point 0.1, they're a little more gentle. And then for speed, same thing kind of applies. They'll kind of go like vibrating, but if you make it a little more subtle, you'll get more realistic grass. So you don't really want to make the speed too great. You don't want the strength to be too much either. Just something subtle. Unless things get crazy, so say a windstorm comes in, starts to pick up, and so does the speed. You, know, you can get things to go kind of crazy. But that's basically what the wind source does here. Um, and again, the properties, they weren't on screen, they're right here. So you got strength and speed. So high strength and high speed, low strength, low speed. And that's how you can get some, some basic wind going. So right now it's very, very subtle. Uh, but as you keep drawing, you know, they'll keep moving with the wind. So that's basically the gist of it. Uh, there's not much more to really go into. Um, a lot of it's really more specific detail that you won't really need to know about. Um, but the brush size, again, that changes you know, how big of the radius it is, uh, the paint density is how dense it will paint within that radius. And the same thing goes with the race density. So, and again, to erase, it's control shift. Uh, but you gotta make sure that everything's low, except for a race density. So that's basically it. That's the foliage tool. Again, you can use any static mesh. It's just preferred, or 
I guess intended for foliage, uh, so I'll just keep that in mind. And then uh, what I'm going to do next week uh, as a second part to this, I'm going to show you how to create a landscape, uh, some basic functionalities of that tool, how to get a landscape material working correctly where you can have the material kind of dynamically change uh, what material it's using based on different uh, variables of the landscape such as slopes, plateaus, things like that. Um, so I'm going to get that going for you guys next week. Again, it's going to be done in UDK since a lot of you have been asking for it. Um, but that's basically it for this tutorial. Uh, so we just learned a little bit about the foliage mode. Uh, pretty simple tool. Uh, so definitely check it out. If you have any questions, you know, put them in the comments. I'll be trying my best to answer any questions. Um, and also if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe at there uh, at the bottom. Uh, make sure you like the video and share it as well, just so it gets out there. And there will also be uh, a download link to Radial Impact in the description. Uh, so if you haven't played that yet, give it a play. Let me know your thoughts on it. Um, and again, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.